Hello, my dear walkers. It is I, Reanimate Her, and this is Coffee Chat of Horrors. Condensed, the only horror show that takes its coffee like it's magic, and that is black. Today, we'll be stalking, mm, I gotta watch my wording, we'll be talking about 30 Days of Night. So slap on that SPF triple six and grab yourself a bloody bucket of brains and enjoy the show. Uh, let's get it on. <laughs> so 30 Days of Night was released October 19th, 2007. And the budget for this show was $30 million. Yes, 30 mil. Worldwide, it was able to occur $75 million. Yes, $75 million. Before we dive any bit further into this, I do want to say thank you to Reaper1923 for creating the art, the, the imagery that you see here today. Um, thank you very much. Now, uh, the plot is, after an Alaskan town is plunged into darkness for a month, it is attacked by bloodthirsty gang of vampires. Yes, this is by far one of my most favorite vampire films of all time. Why? Because it shows you what a real vampire would be like. It, we romanticize vampires throughout history as these suave and sexy creatures that are here to seduce you and turn you into a vampire or just, you know, suck all your blood out. But in reality, a vampire is a vicious creature that doesn't care to have sex with you. It doesn't care what it want, what your dreams are. It just wants to eat you. And 30 Days of Night really portrays that. This is why I have to say it's, it's by far one of my favorite, uh, one of my favorite uh, vampire films of all time. Uh, this show was shot in New Zealand. Nearly half of the calf, cast, calf, and half of the cast is Kiwi or Australian. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a bit of information you didn't know. Uh, the prints that were shipped to some theaters, they were shipped under a fake title so no one would know what they are. And that title was Red Impressions. Yeah, Red Impressions, which is where this was shipped to other theaters. Now, the vampires in this film speak a completely original language. They do, an original language. And it was created for the film with the help of a linguistics professor at the New Zealand University. I thought that was a really cool tidbit of information. Um, they had their real own language that nobody else understood except for them. This language was created just for them. So I thought that was a really uh, cool tidbit of info. Uh, Steve Niles originally conceived the story as a film. After years of rejections by studios, it was reworked into a comic book. Yeah, and eventually a studio that rejected the original screenplay went for the comic version, which surprises me. Like, why would you go, you know, if someone brought this to you as a screenplay for a movie and you read it, why wouldn't you take it then? You waited until it became a comic, but I guess that's what it had to do. To me, this movie is amazing. Um, most of the night shots in this film were shot during the day using a day for night process. Yeah. That is very interesting because if you've watched this film, you've noticed that the night times actually look like night and you don't really see that it's too much daytime. Uh, you would, I would have never guessed that it was filmed during the day with this type of lens. Uh, Josh Harnett did all of his own stunts in this film as Melissa George did most of her own driving. Yeah, and I thought that was really cool because majority of the time, uh, people in Josh Hart standing normally don't do their own stunts. And there's a lot of diving and rolling and, and, you know, stunt work in this film as he fights against vampires. Uh, the entire town of Barrow used in the movie was built in New Zealand. All the scenes were shot all there. Every single scene was shot in New Zealand or on a soundstage where it was easier to control the fake snow. Now, having a set built or using the town can be tricky and they were actually able to get away with it here so the entire town of Barrow is where this film was recorded at uh, there were small pieces of this film that were done at a sound stage especially when the snow was not coming down and according to David Slade veteran director Sam Raimi was slated to direct the film when the script was in its earliest stages 
Then Raimi opted to produce it instead. If you know me, I you know I love Sam Raimi. I love his vision. I love his work, not only in the horror industry, but in other industries as well. I He has a really good eye for things. I enjoy his films. Now, in the comics, the head vampire Vincent travels to Borrow to stop the other vampire's plan in order to preserve the secrecy of vampires. If you think about it, these creatures have lived for hundreds of years, being unknown to humans. We've heard myths and stories and lore and film, just like these people have, but no one to that time has seen a vampire with their own eyes and lived to tell the tale. So in the comic book, they wanted to make sure that the vampires stay hidden because if you go and demolish an entire friggin' town and somehow someone is left behind and stays alive, your secret is out because all that person has to say is look at all these dead bodies everywhere, right? Uh, so in the comic, there is a little bit of difference. If you do get a chance to read the comic and watch the film, you can see the subtle differences in between the storylines. And all of the vampires actually have names. They all have names, but none of them are ever mentioned until the end credits. Yeah. So if you're going to watch this movie for the first time or you're going to rewatch it uh, for, uh, for me, like the hundredth time, uh, take notice of that, that there is only uh, credits at the end with their vampire names. None of them uh, actually have their names said throughout the whole film. Now, there's a scene with a little girl. This little girl vampire has a tattoo that is visible for a few frames. The stick figure-like tattoo on her right arm is the logo of a German industrial band. Yeah, I thought that was kind of cool. I'd give you the band's name, but I cannot pronounce it, so it will be in the description down below if you are interested in that name. <laughs> now, all of the vampires, a couple of hours of makeup, as you can tell, their, their teeth are not your normal vampire teeth. They are more of a full mouth, and the, they have contacts in. The prosthetics for these guys, it was only a couple of hours per, per vampire in the seat. And uh, in reality, the city of Barrow is, doesn't have the sun for 67 days, roughly 67 days, where in the film, it says that the city doesn't have daylight for 30 days, 30 days of night. Uh, but in reality, the actual town of Barrow is 67 days, roughly, without sun. My goodness, I couldn't imagine. Now, I'm allergic to the sun, so I burn 365 in the winter, in the summer, in the spring, and it sucks. But having a place where there is no sun at all, like not even any little bits of sunlight, I think it would be very draining on a body. I don't like the sun. I stay hidden from the sun. I'm always wearing, like... Uh, 90 SPF proof, hats, long sleeves, so I cannot stand the sun. But I still think it would be a horrible time to be in the sun and uh, not have it at all. 67 days, that's, that's quite a bit of time. Uh, <laughs> now, in the comics as well, the hero's name is uh, Eben Olmon, which was changed to Eben Olsen for the film. And according to the comic book artist, Ben Templesmith, the working title for the film was Crackers in Alaska. <laughs> Crackers in Alaska. That was the working title for this film. Um, I'm glad they changed the title to 30 Days of Night. I don't think Crackers in Alaska would have gone over well. Uh, maybe when this was released it would have been fine, but I don't think the movie would have done as well as it did with the title Crackers in Alaska. It, let me know what you think about the title. Let me know down in the comments what you think about it. Uh, the airport sign that you guys see in the film reads Wiley Post and Will Rogers. These are real airport names located in Oklahoma City. Those little bits of tidbits of information. Uh, I really do hope you enjoyed this condensed version of Coffee Chat of Horrors so you can uh, get information on 30 Days of Night and if you are wanting to catch a live taping of this show, I do it every Sunday at 9.30 a.m. Mountain Time over on twitch.tv forward slash reanimator right there as you can see. Also in the description, you can find out where you can aggressively stalk me and catch more of my other content. If you're new to my channel, make sure you go and stab that subscribe button, slash that like button, leave me some information down below. Let me know what you like. Let me know what you want to see here on a condensed version of Coffee Chat of Horrors. 
Uh, and tell your friends. Tell your friends. I'm sure there's more horror lovers out there than just myself and the community of the Horde. Thank you guys so very much for hanging out with me. And again, if there's anything that you want to know about, write down below in the comments. Let me know. I will see you guys Monday morning over on twitch.tv forward slash reanimator. Slashes all later. Bye-bye.